Spectrograms are a display that show a time, frequency, and amplitude for a sound. We can work with those dimensions in how the spectrogram is displayed uh, to get the best possible picture of our speech. The display of amplitude in a spectrogram is called the dynamic range. Um, if you're going to use a, a scale from uh, white to black with gray in between, you have to decide the quietest sound you're going to show. Anything that's quieter than that is going to be completely white. Similarly, you have to decide what is the loudest sound you're going to show, and anything that's louder than that loudest uh, sound is going to show up as completely black. So spectrograms can vary in their dynamic range, the distance from that uh, lowest displayed amplitude to that highest displayed amplitude. I show these over a grayscale in my spectrograms. Some people use a color scale um, from uh, blues on the low end to reds on the high end. In the PROT program that we'll use in this class, dynamic range can be altered, uh, and the most useful thing it does is uh, removing the appearance of background noise in a recording so that you can focus on the speech. So here's a... Uh, kind of a visualization of what dynamic range does on a spectrum. I know this is a spectrum because it has a frequency display across the bottom and amplitude up the side. Um, this is a fairly wide bandwidth spectrum. We don't have really good frequency resolution, um, but we do have some peaks that go above our upper cutoff for those frequencies. Um, there are three of them we would show uh, completely dark black um, for those uh, frequencies at their amplitude. Uh, on the low end, we have uh, five regions that go below that red line. Those would show as completely white, even though in any of those particular regions there is some variation in what the amplitude is. Um, we have to uh, choose a place to uh, cut it off. The ideal dynamic range would show us um, all of our variation in amplitude, so perhaps it would be a little wider of a dynamic range given this particular spectrum. Um, on the other hand, um, it's a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of an art to find a visual display that you think looks good. Here's an example of a dynamic range difference in two different uh, spectrograms. So this was based on a sound recording of the exact same sound, in this case a periodic sound. You can see the vertical striations that are regularly spaced indicating periodicity, as well as um, there being some uh, amplitude at the lowest frequencies that would represent the frequency range of phonation. The spectrogram on the left appears to have sort of a lot more uh, amplitude in it in general, um, whereas the one on the right has some lighter white regions. Uh, depending on your recording situation, there may, may be uh, background noise that, that shows up in your display that you would like to um, uh, eliminate so that you can focus on the loudest parts, the most important speech characteristic parts of uh, what you're looking at. Okay, so uh, if we uh, have that situation where we're making a recording but we don't have great recording conditions and I want to modify my spectrogram parameters to try and eliminate how much background noise there is, uh, I have the low end of the dynamic range and the high end of the dynamic range and I can either uh, move either one of those ends up or down. Uh, assuming the background noise is, uh, you know, quieter than the speech I'm recording, and if it's not, uh, I'm going to have trouble getting a good clear picture, uh, but assuming it is quieter than the speech I'm recording, if I were to raise the lower end of the dynamic range, I would cut out that low amplitude sound from my visualization of the speech. 
So it's not modifying the speech at all to mess with the spectrogram parameters. It's just modifying the display. Kind of like putting a filter on your uh, uh, pictures. We can also modify the bandwidth of a spectrogram. Uh, a spectrogram is made of a whole bunch of analysis windows. Uh, each one, there's a spectrum you compute, or the computer computes for you. Um, the duration of that analysis window controls the balance between frequency sensitivity and time sensitivity for your spectrogram. Most of the time what we look at are wide band spectrograms that have a pretty short analysis window that get you good time resolution, um, which means you have relatively poor frequency resolution or it's kind of blurry. Um, the alternative is called a narrow band spectrogram where you use a longer analysis window and that gets you good frequency resolution. But to do that, to look at speech over a longer analysis window, means that if it changes over the course of that window, you're not going to be able to see the change. Instead, you're going to kind of get a smear of all the frequencies involved in the change. So you don't get very good time resolution in that case. Here's an example uh, of two uh, spectra created from the same sample of speech. Uh, one is uh, broadband, so it takes a shorter time window of that speech and looks at it, and you can see some peaks and troughs, um, but each of the peaks is a little bit broader because it doesn't have really good frequency sensitivity. In the spectrum on the uh, right, we have much sharper peaks and troughs, and we can kind of see more variation in the middle. Um, uh, due to uh, a longer time window getting us a more accurate depiction of the frequencies in that sound. Uh, bandwidth can pretty radically affect the appearance of a spectrogram when you're looking at speech. So on the left where we have a wide band spectrogram, the analysis windows are so short that we can see variation within individual cycles of the periodicity of speech. That's what gives us that vertical striation as parts of the cycle are louder and parts of the cycle are quieter. But since the sound is periodic, those loud and quiet parts repeat. That's what gives us our, our vertical stripiness. If we were to use a narrow band spectrogram and get much finer frequency resolution, uh, what we end up seeing is the individual harmonic frequencies that are present in phonation phonation being a, um, a harmonic series that we'll talk about um, uh, later in the course. Um, so if you try to do a spectrogram of your own speech, for example, um, uh, if you see what looks like horizontal striping in the speech, you may want to adjust the bandwidth to get something that looks more like the spectrograms that I show you in class. So the typical analysis uses 5 millisecond, 0.005 second windows, and has a 50 dB dynamic range. Those are the default parameters in the PROT program, for example. Uh, we can use the narrow band spectrogram to look at how the voice pitch changes uh, over the course of a sentence, for example. Um, but it's not a common thing to do because we have better ways to look at that than through a spectrogram. Um, but we do sometimes need to mess with these parameters in order to study particular populations. So for example, children's voices have much higher frequencies in them than adult voices do. If I want to maintain the appearance of a wide band spectrogram, but for a recording of a child's voice, which has higher frequencies, what do I need to do? Do I need to make the analysis window shorter or make the analysis window longer? Since children's voices have higher frequencies, higher frequencies uh, happen over shorter periods because frequency and uh, uh, period are inversely related to one another. Um, so if we want to keep uh, the analysis windows to look appropriately blurry for a wide band spectrogram, we would need to make that analysis window even shorter to make it blurry over the time span of a child's speech.